looks any, any better for you guys. We think it looks better on our end, so let us know. All right, so here we go. I'm Gavin Verhey here with uh, Big Head Joe, and we're bringing you live coverage of the Star City Games Open Series here in Dallas-Fort Worth. We're in round five. Both these players are 4-0. On your right, we have AJ Soccer. We just had him in the booth not that long ago, and uh, he's clearly happy to be here. Two good friends battling it out. There's Goofy Hair Ryan O'Connor for you. And, uh, so is that his nickname, like, I'm Big Head Joe, he's Goofy Hair Ryan O'Connor? It's, it's more of an unofficial nickname. Fair enough. But, uh, I mean, you have to differentiate them, because there, there's, like, the Star City Games, Ryan O'Connor. Like, in my phone, this is what they are. That's so funny. So, uh, so AJ is playing Blue, Red, White, Cobblade. Not a lot of changes from last week. Uh, not a lot of changes from the past couple weeks. Uh, pretty stock. Ryan O'Connor, on the other hand, playing a 9 Avenge Mind deck we haven't seen for a while. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll be pretty awesome to see how this plays out. I'm excited. Yeah, all right, so here we go. AJ leads on Colonnade. Ryan leads on Raging Ravine. There we go. Uh, there's a land we used to see a lot of, and now we just don't see as much Yeah, it's down to like a 3 or $4 land. It's one of the more forgotten about man lands, even though it's pretty powerful. I mean, it's using Rug, but uh, not really many other decks packing it these days. So Seacrum Coast comes down from AJ, followed by a Hawk. And the Hawk resolves as Ryan is not playing any colors that would play counters. So, searches up some Hawks there. <laughs> Make sure you don't confuse your decks. You're both wearing the, rocking the same sleeves. Don't daze it, bro. And there's a Razor Verge Thicket. Uh, I'm surprised I still remember the name of that land. And a Fauna Shaman. Fauna Shaman meets a quick end via a burn spell that I could not exactly identify. And then here comes a Stoneforge Mystic. <laughs> it's it's got to be Lightning Bolt, right? Well, it could always be Burst Lightning. You never know. It would also deal with it. But And the Stoneforge is going to search up a Sword of Feast and Famine. It's protection from... Vengevine, most importantly. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, the uh, if you can see like the the castle-looking uh, design of the shadows on huh. AJ's side of the board, uh, that is in fact from a. Uh, it's a piece of like a 3,000 card box uh, that has been uh, rigged onto the top of the camera and I'm trying to post a picture of it to Twitter but my phone as usual is not complying. Yeah, so it, it is not in fact Howl's Moving Castle, <laughs> it is just a piece of cardboard. <laughs> Alright, so uh, AJ swoops up his squadron hawk with a sort of uh, feast and famine and uh, Fauna Shaman can't do much about the flying or the protection from green so AJ is going to discard uh, or untap his lands. Ryan's going to discard a card. Too bad he doesn't have a Vengevine to pitch here. Looking over Ryan's hand, it looks like there's quite a few lands there. Rootbound Craig goes down for Ryan. Standard winner box number two. All right, and then Jay. If you are the That's a big turn up, right there. We'll AJ again. follows up his uh, oh. and sword equipment, uh, equip and swing with a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, I mean, maybe he goes bounce uh, Fanasham here. This could be brutal. Pretty intense. Oh man. Alright, so yep, picks up the Fauna Shaman. And, uh, Oxidus Scrap Melter. Ah, so that must be the one of. I'd imagine that's the tutor target for uh, Fauna Shaman. Huh. Makes sense. I mean, good that he had it in his hand. Knocked that sword right out of the air. <laughs> right. Well, that's one, way to, that's one way to deal with the equipment. <laughs> like I said, he's got to have some main deck answer to equipment if he's running those three right. colors. That, that's one way to slice a sword. People are just now chiming in about uh, AJ's comments about Brainstorm. <laughs> it's so cool to be in the future and yet so strange at the same time. It is. Uh, there's about an eight, for those of you just tuning in, there's about an eight, eight to nine minute uh, feed delay on our side. So what we're saying now, you won't hear for about eight to nine more minutes. Uh, all right, so uh, AJ drops down another Stoneforge Mystic, trying to, uh, yep, so he finds Sword of Feast and Famine. <laughs> and it, Ryan's like, what does that do? <laughs> Never seen this card in my life. Well, I think it might have been, uh, I think it might have been Japanese. 
Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was foreign, that's for sure. All right, Ryan draws Stoneforge Mystic. Looks like so. So the cool thing about uh, the really cool thing about the Naya deck is it can play Stoneforge Mystic and the Swords too, and it gets to play them pretty naturally. It gets to naturally play Basilisk Caller if you have Cunning Spark Mage. Right. Um, it is a it's quite an interesting choice here. Always love seeing. Uh, <laughs> seeing, you know, innovative decks. Yeah, it's really interesting because I think a lot of people give beatdown decks a bad rap that they're easy to play or whatever, but if you just watch these train decisions, like, Ryan is making no fewer decisions than AJ, and, I mean, if you ever, especially if you've got to untap with one of those Fauna Shamans, figuring out what to get and what his plan was, like, making sure you're getting all the points of damage you can is really tricky. I mean, but again, just like damage, like, just like damage on the stack going away, like, I would almost argue that, uh, you know, something different creates more decisions. Like, a deck like this is obviously tested. It's good. So a lot of the decisions with a deck like, uh, with, like, the, the Call Blade decks can almost be automatic, you know? I mean, you're going to play a Stoneforge Mystic, you're just going to search up the Sword of Feast of Heaven. You know what I mean? Almost every time. Probably at least 98% of the time, sure. you know? Or, you know, or Sword of Body Mind, sometimes, whichever, right? Like, well, these days, it's almost always Sword of Feast of Heaven <laughs> first. Some you know people I mean? are just eschewing the, the Body and Mind altogether. Um, it's true. All right, so uh, so Glenn Jones is bringing us over deck lists, and uh, so we finally get to take a look at Ryan O'Connor's deck here. So it looks like four Birds of Paradise, four Vengevine, four Fauna Shaman, four Mystics, four Squadron Hawk, two Acidic Slime, two Cunning Spark Mage, and then for some one of targets we have Inferno Titan, Sylvan Ranger, Oxida Scrap Melter, Precursor Golem, Hero of Oxid Ridge, Bane Slayer Angel, Linvala Keeper of Silence, and Sunblast like Angel. Whoa. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. This is just basically this is basically mono dudes except for the uh, except for the equipment. It's kinda awesome. This is a final call for sign ups for two like giants. I like it. Yeah, I mean then you have the and two sword piece of famines and a basilisk collar to go uh, to go find. Uh, so he's got a lot of one ofs which is cool. The cool thing about that many one ofs is you'll just draw some naturally, and none of them are bad on their own. You know, Sylvan Rager, perfectly fine. Inferno Titan, perfectly fine. Precursor Golem, perfectly fine, right? So it's pretty interesting. Very, I think. very surprised with all those creatures, uh, especially with Chapin's article to not see lead the Stampede, but... Yeah, I mean, he did opt for no leads. I'm wondering if... Uh, so, I mean, this might just not be a deck where he wants it. Also, the slots are really crucial like this uh, in a deck like this, you know? But I'm sure Ryan probably has a pretty good reason for it. We can maybe talk to him about it later. Absolutely. In a, in a sideboard, he has a Core Firewalker, Condemn, Cunning Spark Mage, uh, Second Basilisk Caller, Sun Titan, Gideon Jura, Acidic Slime, and Lightning Bolt. And meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, Ryan O'Connor uh, has been getting beat down by uh, a sorted up hawk and a non sorted up hawk. And hawks all around. And I mean that that scrap melter knocked off one sword, but <laughs> he's got another one. Yep, the there are swords to spare. Where that came from? And uh, so I'm looking over at AJ's deck list here. Who decided to write his deck list in cursive? Okay, so yeah, it's, it's as I thought because uh, AJ searched up a second sword of feast and famine. <coughs> uh, AJ has, like we were talking about, just done away with sort of body and mind all together and just runs two sort of feast and famines now. Yeah. You just don't, don't get the body and mind often enough. Uh, you just play feast and famine and... It's just, uh, just, way, it's just a way bigger ability. Um, although, I mean, the sort of body and mind is uh, technically or, 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 you know, potentially better in, like, the Valakut matchup. But... So, sometimes, but... I mean, taking out a card from their hand in Valakut, like, it's all about a resource war. Sure. And stripping their hand of, you know, their top-end cards, like Summoning Trap and Primeval, Primeval Titan are uh, really strong. It's a nice really old-school Birds of Paradise from oh, Ryan yes. O'Connor. Yeah. Uh, Ryan O'Connor's Emmanuel likes his uh, pretty cards. I like me some old-school art. AJ is still uh, using, <laughs> leveraging that Jace to good advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. 
Brainstorms wake up cards. Uh, so, what do you think Ryan needs to get out of this rough situation? I mean, Vengevine would certainly help. I mean, an active Fauna Shaman is key, but it's going to be very hard for him to establish that. Plus, he's under a quick, quick clock with all those squadron yeah, hawks here. Lots of flyers up in the air coming at him. Uh, AJ. This Oh, no, go ahead. No, this game's just not looking very good for Ryan, frankly. Yeah, yeah. AJ established a quick board presence with his uh, with his blue white blue white red Kago deck, and he just never let it go. The the thing is that about the blue red white Kago deck is a lot of people really feel like it's a control deck, but I think it was AJ or Drew Levin who talked about this, how it's really just a fish deck at its core. I mean, you have some controlling elements, and you just play hawks and swords, and you kill them fast or relatively fast. The game's gonna take a while, but you know, you just grind them out with sword advantage and, and counter spells and under a uh, wall of squadron hawks. And speaking of uh, AJ's deck, once again, it looks pretty stock compared to what we've been used to. Uh, one main deck, Inferno Titan, still a holdover. Uh, two mana leak, three spell pierce, three day of judgment, three Gideon Jura. Uh, sideboard, he, we talk, he talked about the one spreading season when he was in the booth a little while ago. He said he wanted a card that was good against a range of decks like Balakut, uh, Blue White Black Cobblade, and. Um, uh, and vampires. Other than that, I mean, looks very similar to the list he's been playing for a while now. I just love Inferno Titan. The card is so big. Yeah, the card seems awesome. Like in this format. I'm right now an Inferno Titan from Ryan. If he had the mana, it would just be pretty brutal. But he doesn't. So. Yeah, I mean, in Inferno Titan just kills all. You know, Squadron Hawk, Bashes, Pumps, deals a lot of damage. It's so versatile for it. I mean, all the Titans have just created such a profound impact on Constructed. There is no card in the cycle that has not been a, a huge contender at some point, right? We've seen right. Frost Titan, Grave Titan, uh, Sun Titan, Primeval Titan, and uh, Inferno Titan all be very strong contenders at different points in time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like our joke. Our joke used to be on uh, on uh, you know MTG Taps was that the format was wide open. You can play any Titan you want. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you, you can play all the Titans. Now it's. I mean, now it's kind. Of, I mean, standard has definitely drifted away from that a little bit, but they're still there and yeah. uh, they're still uh, powerful and big players here. I mean, all of the cawing has kind of reduced the power of Titans in a sense, just because you strip your resources with Sword of Feast and Famine, the war turns elsewhere. Right. Like I was saying, like last week was like your. Your uh, your 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 finishers are coming down on like turns two and three now instead of like turn six. Right. Yeah, the the format just sped up, and you can't afford to leave cards in your hand, or else they'll just be thrown away to a sword. So Ryan seems to be stuck on four mana here, which is also a big problem. Yeah, I mean R Ryan's had a ton of problems, this, a ton of problems this game. And that's just one of them. He uh, plays down that fauna shaman again, trying to get something going, but AJ has drawn both spell pierces, which are. Almost dead cards in this matchup. Yeah, basically dead. Uh, spoilers, he's probably going to cut those. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, AJ is definitely boarding out those. Yeah, I mean, I... The spell pierces. And I wouldn't be surprised if the mana leaks also hit the bench, too. I feel like AJ probably just wants to upgrade, do a lot of proactive cards instead of reactive ones. Sure. So we'll see, you know, a Condemn, maybe a Spreading Seas, Cunning Spark Mage... Vassal's Collar, Sun Titan, maybe Silvac Lifestyle. Yeah, Spark maybe Mage Collar offering. seems like it could come down and be pretty brutal. Yeah, or just Spark Mage in general. I mean, you can pick off Birds of Paradise, uh, Squadron Hawk. Uh, it, it does enough on its own. Sure. Plus, with, yeah, with Collar, clearly it's Collar quite will relevant. Help. Let's see. And uh, AJ is calling it, trying to get in for the death stroke here. He knows that... Uh, he doesn't want to give Ryan too much time to get back into the game. He doesn't want him to chain Venge Vines or anything like that. So it's time for a Colonnade to fight, fight, fight. AJ, of course, uh, rocking the mtgmom.com sticker. Uh, anyone who has not used a, uh, mtgmom.com, uh, that website is the most... Tournament. 
awesome resource for uh, you know tournament schedules. Just I mean, it's a calendar. If you play in tournaments, bookmark it. I can't stress that enough. In the S through Z board. If you're sitting there watching this, wondering why didn't I know about this? I live in Fort Worth. Should have been uh, following uh, MTGmom.com. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if, if you're if you're in your house in Fort Worth right now, and you have a standard deck, and you're not here, clearly something is wrong. <laughs> it's, it's not too late to come and sign up for us on the side events. Very true. Or just trade. Side events all weekend. So, uh, so AJ, thinking. He knows he's got the game in a pretty solid spot. All right. And AJ just passed it back. Ryan's looking at his cards, and I don't think those cards are uh, going to be in his hand for very long. They're going to quickly get shuffled back into his deck But as he uh, scoops up his cards. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a pretty rough situation for Ryan here. Yeah, I mean, he can serve him with a Stoneforce Mystic for a one. He'll gain a life, but... The Squadron Hawks have him on the back. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There's the scoop. So, yeah, just a poor start by Ryan there. His deck did not do what he needed it to do. Um, it did not have a quick start. Didn't have any Birds of Paradise backing. Didn't have any Venge Vines. AJ managed to deal with Fauna Shaman because of Bolt. And that's the big advantage of the blue-red-white Cobblade deck is the, are those Lightning Bolts. I yeah. mean, the blue-white deck does not have a card like that. It's true. You know, I mean, maybe even if you main deck to Condemn or something, it's not going to answer... Uh, it's not going to answer... Uh, Fauna Shaman, you could play Journey to Nowhere or Oust, but a lot of players aren't really opting for that strategy. Right. Journey to Nowhere is one of those cards that uh, I'm surprised that it sees a lot less play than, uh, than it does. Yeah, I mean, the card is awesome. I really miss Oblivion Ring. But, uh, I think Journey a lot of people miss Oblivion Ring, yeah. frankly. It's just, it felt like, it's weird because Oblivion Ring, Ring was in the format for so long, and it just felt like an awesome catch-all card to have, you know? I mean, dealt with Planeswalkers, dealt with Equipments, dealt with right. Enchantments, and it was, it's good from a just design perspective, just because you constantly have this card out there that if, if, like, it's like a safety valve. If one permanent type that's hard to deal with gets too out of hand, the white decks have an answer to it. On the flip side, you don't want standard to be changing. You don't want the, the default to always be Oblivion Ring, right? Right, right. I mean... I mean, there's other. I mean, there's lots of answers for planeswalkers. I mean, that's the thing that I've always talked about. Is people get upset about like Jason Mind Sculptor. You know, like oh, it costs so much. Oh, I can't afford them. Like, there are ways to deal with Jason Mind Sculptor. Ryan's got the right idea. He can turn creatures sideways. <laughs> yeah, Avenge Vine is a pretty good answer. You, t you pay four for uh, your Jace. All right, attack him. <coughs> what do you think are the odds we see AJ's one condemn hit Avenge Vine in this match? <laughs> He's got a single condemn. Uh, and if you draw see. it, that's what you want to save it for, right? AJ, I mean, you know, he's, he's just kind of a stun master. Uh, very likely. I would say, you know, 95% chance. So uh, we see AJ fooling around with the sideboard here. It looks like he's bringing in those uh, Cunning Spark Mages. Sure did look like it. I haven't checked Twitter in a while. Once again, we, we do apologize for the uh, for the quality of the picture here. It's just the, there's nothing we can do about it. We've we've tried like adding a little bit of shadow and doing what we can, but the room is just dark. It's you know my well, eyes have adjusted to it, but the cameras won't adjust. <laughs> yeah, and neither will uh, the fiber optic cables connecting. I mean, the internet connection is kind of rough, so. The feed's about eight or nine minutes behind, so we apologize. But uh, you know, if you once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us on Twitter, and uh, we'll try and respond to them as soon as we can. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So uh, Ryan uh, counts out his sideboard. That's something that's really popular to do in Japan. We don't see hear that often. In in uh, it's really interesting when you play against a player from from Japan or uh, in an Asian country. Um, or you know you, you play in a tournament over there. A lot of players will count out their sideboards uh, to you, but in America you don't see that as often. So it's cool that Ryan did that. Huh? <laughs> I never realized uh, that was like a geographical thing. You know, yeah, I mean, just in different areas, players have different, you know, different norms, right? Right. Absolutely. I mean, uh, for example, in a in Japan, players don't really are like you can't really trade cards very well because the shops won't let you 
won't let you trade cards as like an honor kind of thing, right? You're taking business away from the store. Huh. Um, so, you know, you have to do transactions with the store. So it, it, the, the trading market over there is much different. Um, there's just all these kinds of small geographical things in the way people play. That's really interesting. I've never been before, so. Yeah. I've never even left the country before, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy stuff out there. <laughs> And yeah, it's so cool. I mean, magic unites everybody, right? Like, we all have like the same kind of universal language. We all speak magic. Yeah, you know? it, it's really, like, it's really a cool. You thing. go to a Grand Prix, and there are players from Brazil and Japan and Europe and Australia. Sometimes, you know, um, and wild exotic places like Australia. Yeah, exactly. Where there's alligators and like. <laughs> Or maybe uh, there's at least kangaroos. I guess there could be alligators. I don't know. How, I don't know how prevalent they are. But regardless, you know, just all these different people coming together under one band. So uh, I know that uh, AJ Soccer is very religious about his uh, his practices uh, for magic. He watches all of his matches that are on SCG Live. Uh, rigorously after a tournament and I'm sure about a week from now when these go up on lot on uh, on SCG on a uh, GG's live wherever they're hosted at right now AJ is gonna watch this and be like they're talking about this while I'm sideboarding like <laughs> but you know we love you AJ so uh, players shuffling up Should be interesting. I really want to see uh, Ryan's deck in action. It's always a shame when we feature a cool deck and we don't really get to see it perform. You know? Yeah, I know. I hate that. Um, like last week in Memphis, um, Michael Posge was playing a, a really, sorry, a really awesome uh, twelve post list. And uh, you know, me and Joey like immediately on day two were like, we want, we want Posge. We want to get, we want to see the twelve post. And, uh, and he didn't really, he was not able to really get anything going for himself. Um, he did, I mean, we did get to see, I'm pretty sure we saw Emrakul cast, but just, uh, I mean, he was playing against Merfolk, and like in games one and three, he basically just didn't get much done, you know? So it was a little rough, but. Uh, yeah, I mean. Featured a couple decks like that before. I mean, on the flip side, sometimes you get really awesome things like top decks, time spirals, right? But yeah. That's true. All right, so the players finally take their opening hands. Ryan's going to be on the play this time. His hand looked pretty good from what I saw. I think I saw a copper line and a Birds of Paradise. Yeah, this hand looks great. Turn one yeah, Birds of Paradise. Yeah, he's off the races now. It's good. Yeah, I think this we'll see some action from uh, Ryan this time. Granted, it looks like there's a cunning spark match from AJ's side, which will certainly be good for him. AJ leaves off with a celestial colonnade and passes back. And there's a fauna shaman from Ryan. And uh, Ryan, or, yep, Ryan leaves a mountain up, and that it looks like there's a binge vine in Ryan's hand, so. That Fauna Shaman is going to quickly wreak some havoc yeah. if AJ does not have an answer to, to it right here. I know I don't think he has one. I think I just see Cunning Spark Mage in his hand. Without a collar, that will not kill the Fauna Shaman. It will kill the bird, but it's not going to happen fast enough. <laughs> That is some impressive hair, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, he said he isn't called Goofy Haired Ryan O'Connor for nothing. <laughs> All right. So uh, AJ preordains, trying to find a lightning bolt to off that Fauna Shaman before it gets out of hand. Looks back to his hand. Edgar made some sick plays now to stay alive against Arenda. He was at six, the guy bolted him down to three. And Edgar put the box attacked and then Gideon then killed his own hawk to go for free and the guy ripped the bolt obviously and it's still, you know, like, if Edgar didn't do that, like, if he just got the greedy play, it would have lost. Huh. Lifestyle. What? Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Like, how do you get Still walk lifestyle? Well, that's, uh, that's match. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, so, so did he won the match? Yes, yeah, so Edgar's So, so, uh, 
Alex Bertoncini and Edgar Flores both still undefeated in this tournament. Oh, oh, Al Alex, pi Alex picked up a loss. He lost last year. So Alex is 4-1. Uh, Edgar Flores, 5-0. Just, uh, just made a great play. Uh, but back to the match at hand. We'll go into that later. Uh, AJ uh, preordained and did not... Did he's not stuck find on what land. he was looking for. No, he's not stuck on land. Never no. mind. And uh, Ryan's... All right, he goes for the final shaman. Okay, so that's a Cidic Slime? So Daniel's yeah. a Cidic Slime. Maybe that's what I saw instead of the Venge Line. Yeah, because I, I, can't, I can't see where he wouldn't... Uh, I can't see where he wouldn't discard the uh, Vengevine if he had it. Yeah, we heard your 5-0. Yeah, Edgar Flores comes by. Finally beat a red deck. He's 5-0. After uh, Gideon Juring, his own squadron hawk, equipped with a Slovak life staff to gain 3 light. And that is why you continue to play the same deck over and over. Meanwhile, Ryan O'Connor... Uh, Squadron hawks it up. Grab Hawk is just everywhere. Not even the beatdown decks can get away from the Hawk. Now, Hawk is really awesome with Fauna Shaman because you like just get three more creatures of fuel. So instead of leading the Stampede, which would be a legitimate thing to do in this deck, don't get sure, me wrong, sure. you, you Fauna Shaman up a bunch of creatures and you have your fuel right there. Yeah. Well, Ryan's in a good position here, but... Not right now. Uh, so uh, now back to AJ. Now the board isn't threatening right now, but he knows well enough that Naya boards can quickly become convoluted. <laughs> Squadron Hawk also is an awesome way to trigger Vengevine because you know you, you play two Hawks, you get another Hawk. So for a total of four mana, you can bring back all your Vengevines. And yeah, absolutely. So it's a one, one card combo. You don't have to trinket Mage from Mnight anymore. You know. I always felt like that was a uh, a weird, I don't know. I go. So Basilisk Caller for AJ. Okay, so we got the Basilisk Caller. Okay, so he's going to get a, he's going to assemble the uh, Spark Mage Caller combo here, it looks like. And Ryan's going to ditch a hawk. Players, I need Ian Jashway to the main event stage, please. Ian Jashaway to the main event stage, please. And he pitches the Hawk for... Oxidus Scrap Melter. Okay, so Scrap Melter comes down. Once again, the one of Scrap Melter gives him a nice little versatility card that deals with uh, the swords. A nice 3-3 three, three bonus on top of everything else. You can go for a Scrap Melter or Manic Vandal. Now, oh, okay, he played it to get rid of the collar. Okay. Yeah. So collar goes away. I didn't even I didn't see the collar on the board. That's why I was like, all right. So, yeah. But yeah. So yeah, AJ <laughs> drew drew out the scrap melter, and I mean maybe he's got more plans. But no, it looks like AJ's in the tank. That is his thinking face. <laughs> it's also his AJ face. All right, here comes down uh, Squadron Hawk. Uh, pulls out Day of Judgment out of his deck. Nope, cannot squadron hawk for Day of Judgment. <laughs> it's, it seemed like a fun plan, but not a necessarily legal plan. Entertaining. He, right. need, he now has quadron hawks at his disposal. The squadron flock, as it were. All kinds of fun puns you can play there to make LSV proud. Yeah, so, absolutely. So there goes the other uh, other squadron hawk, and uh, still hasn't answered that fauna shaman. And I think this is probably when we're going to start seeing uh, vengevines. Sounds like right about the right time. No better time than the present. Let's see what Ryan decides to do. Carefully manages his lands. I mean, he, he could also attack with the Raging Ravine, too. Um, all right, so he does have a land. Oh, uh, but he... Uh, oh, well, let's see. Okay, so he goes for Stoneforge Mystic. Cracks the land. And... Gets Basilisk Collar. And his own collar. Okay. 
So are we going to see uh, Call or Equip here, do you think? Call or Equip, leave one up, and then uh, and then you can fawn a Shaman and potentially find a Cunning Spark Mage to combo with it. Seems about right. So yeah, in crashes the 3-3 three, three Scrap Melter, in crashes the 1-1 Squadron Hawk. Oh, oh no. does it? Nope. It, uh, it was a little coward. Mm-hmm. Uh... AJ draws, looking for something to bail him out. Inferno Titan, that's a nice one. Yeah. Uh, AJ's at 158. <laughs> no, he's actually at 15. AJ figuring out, all right, how am I going to bail myself out of this one? Granted, AJ, uh, AJ said on Facebook that, like, you know, a lot of his games, the way they play out after watching his games is that he feels like it constantly looks like he's dying and dying and dying and dying, and then he just, you know, wins. <laughs> so, <laughs> AJ knows how to go to the brink of defeat. He knows how to use all of his life points and how to play every turn properly so that he can get the maximum value out of his cards. And I'm sure he's thinking right now, all right, what's my plan? How am I going to win this game? All right, so down comes Cunning Spark Mitch. Still effective right now, even though the other half of his combo is gone. So he chooses to uh, to not spark mage down uh, down birds yet. He's gonna wait and see what Ryan finds and then decide. I imagine Ryan would go for either cunning spark mage or venge vine here. It's possible spark mage is less attractive because his the opposing spark mage can gun it down. Let's see what Ryan wants to do. Inferno Titan, if it's still in his deck, could also be pretty good. AJ, I think th th he has it in his hand, doesn't he? No, in no, Ryan. no I Ryan has it, right? Well, he, who no, has, who no, has it? It's in AJ's hand, but he's in Fodder Shamaning. Oh, so he oh, could. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, looked green. So, I th oh, yeah, that's Vengevine. So, yeah, Ryan's got a Vengevine, which means on his turn he's going to untap. And I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, see another Fodder Shaman discarding Vengevine here. Or potentially just play the Vengevine to crash in, but we'll Pet see what he wants to do. Pet Giraffe on Twitter uh, said they have crocodiles in Australia, by the way. All right, well, that's good to know. Not totally insane. It's, it's <laughs> crocodiles in Australia. There are alligators other places. Florida. Sure. Where I'll be in May. <laughs> <laughs> For the Star City Games Open Series. Yes, nice. Wow, uh, what a coincidence. Nice transition. Pound on the game, see the world. All right, so uh, Ryan serves in with the Scrap Melter, saving... Uh, Saving his Vengevine for a rainy day. And, Is that uh, a double block from AJ on the... Uh... Yeah, it looks like AJ is playing for a Day of Judgment here. Oh, okay. Yep. Or potentially Inferno Titan next turn. Uh, for those who are just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhe here with Big Head Joe here at the Star City Games Open Series in uh, in Dallas, Fort Worth. And this is round five. Both these players are 4-0. We've got Ryan O'Connor with his Naya Vengevine deck, a deck we haven't seen much of lately on the left-hand side of your screen. And he's got a Stoneforge Mystic, a Birds of Paradise, a Squadron Hawk with a Basilisk Caller. Uh, he's got a Fauna Shaman. Down comes the Cunning Spark Mage. Yep. Uh, um, he's got an Oxida Scrap Melter. Uh, Fauna Shaman is now off the screen, but he does have one. Uh, AJ Soccer, on the other hand, is no uh, is is no uh, newcomer to the uh, blue, white, red archetype. He has played it quite significantly to uh, several great finishes in the past couple weeks, and uh, he's trying to pilot his way out of this one. All he has right now is a Cunning Spark Mage and a Squadron Hawk. Jerry just came by and gave us the thumbs up, so Jerry Thompson advances to what I can only assume is 5-0 on the day. Yeah. I, I, have a, I have a very, this is just an entertaining request from Twitter. Uh, JT Tovel asks me to remind him to take his pizza out of the oven now because uh, it'll be done in nine minutes. So Wow, uh, that's awesome. So uh, there we go. Wow, Jerry Thompson would, would be proud. <laughs> Players, we currently have three spots available in a standard win a box. If you would like a chance to battle He hashtagged it with advantageous delay. 
<laughs> I mean, if you're going to have delay, you might as well use it to your advantage, right? <laughs> So, AJ flicking some cards. All right, here comes Squadron Hawk. And are we seeing another Hawk here? Nope. AJ just passes back, holding Condemn in his hand. Ryan, uh, Fawn of Shaman's away, Vengevine. Might actually see that Condemn on uh, Vengevine. He just continues to chain those Vengevines together. It's only a matter of time until we see uh, the quintuplet in action. He's gotta, he's gotta bust him out at some point, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, Vengevines Vines aren't just there to look pretty and discard a Fauna Shaman. They are quite impressive on their own. It looks like we might see. Are we gonna see him come down this turn? We got a fourth one in hand too. Ooh boy! All right, Ryan, looking at his mana. This could be the turn. Uh, things are going haywire. All right, taps four. <laughs> this is a sword. Or taps three for sword. Okay. It sticks and it goes on a hawk. Now the hawk can just be blocked by the other hawks. Well, he's All right, so AJ looks like he's hoping to just clear the I way mean, for a big swing next turn. I mean, I'm sure what Ryan is doing here to be to be especially careful is he doesn't just want to walk into day of judgment. And by holding his Avenge Vines, he can recover from a day really well. Even if AJ Day's here, he's still in rough shape because Ryan just plays a couple of creatures and has three Venge Vines cracking back in. Right. Um, well, he can also end a turn, discard the fourth one in his hand, and then play two creatures. Right, absolutely. And even if, uh, even if AJ uh, days this turn, all four come down next turn. and So, yeah, he has... Ryan has no reason at this point, like... Even though it doesn't look like he's super ahead, he has no reason to blow everything before he has to. Yeah, no reason to go for it unless he knows he Discards the Vengevine, gets the fourth Vengevine. Oh, okay. I thought he had three in the graveyard already. Guns down that squadron, Hawk. That uh, Sword of Feast and Famine that uh, Ryan played last turn got Divine Offering, but Ryan's still in a pretty good position here. AJ figuring out what's my line of play, what, or Ryan's figuring out what's my line of play, what does AJ have, how am I going to line everything up properly. Alright, so down comes Benjamin. So he casts one. It looks like AJ's hand is Inferno Titan, I can't quite make out the other cards, but we, that Inferno Titan is still there. Alright, so he brings that back, here come the rest of them, he's got the quintuplet, or no, that, that's only three. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Ryan's holding the last bench, Ryan, for a rainy day. Judge Appleby to the main event stage. Thomas Appleby to the main event stage. I really thought, I, I don't know why I thought he had four in the graveyard. I don't know. Well, when the, he's fond of shamaning all the time, it's uh, easy to quickly lose track. Yep. The graveyard being up by the, the names there doesn't help things, but... AJ fiddling with his mana. Taps five and goes to Colonnade to block one. And then he looks like he's going to use the mana to condemn the other bench. Right? A great play by AJ. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, okay, it was kind of obvious in some senses, but I think a lot of players might have done something else on their turn instead of using the, the Colonnade in that fashion. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So he uses it to essentially deal with two Venge Vines. And it still cracks in for four. And I think, yep, Ryan just passes. He sees, he sees no reason to extend the rest of his hand. And Aaron Mace is going to bring down the one Inferno Titan for AJ. There's a reason why the Singleton is still in the deck, folks. This Inferno Titan is going to be pretty strong. What do you think you kill here? Fauna Shaman and... Spark uh, Mage, probably? Probably a Spark. I was going to say Spark Mage, yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't want to get Massless Caller active on the other side. No. Absolutely not. Because that Fauna Shaman can tutor up a Stone Forge Mystic, which can get a Bastless Caller. So it's probably going to, yep, and he guns those down. Okay, 
discard a Vengevine in response. Yep, down goes Vengevine. Grab. So he's thinking oh, Vengevine. Oh, condemn from AJ put the Vengevine back in Ryan's deck. That's really interesting. Yeah. So. So Ryan can go get this, another Vengevine if he he's wants. to grab a Stoneforge instead. Yeah, I like Stoneforge here. I think. Uh, uh, no, he's like, nope. He's like, wait. My kind of spark mage is going to die. I mean, I think if you get Stoneforge, maybe you can try and get Caller Spark Mage online next turn. I haven't counted up the mana. But uh, the other option is you just go Vengevine for all. He's looking for that one wrench that you can just never find in the bottom of your toolbox. <laughs> I mean, he's got quite a deep toolbox, too. He's got... Uh, Seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine one ofs in his main deck. Wow. I don't know how many he sideboarded out, but it's pretty fun though. Yeah, this is an important decision for Ryan. He and he knows it. Inferno right. Titan <laughs> comes down. Uh, Inferno Titan for Ryan. He's like, all right. You want to brawl with Inferno Titans? Also, you really have men brawl with Inferno Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play is standard wooden box or a commander pod. Come on up, we'll get signed in and started. All right, AJ passes back. I'll see your Inferno Inferno Titan. All right, so so we clearly got the Titan with the plan. Do you think you just run it out there? Yeah, well, apparently so. That's what it looks like. Bam. Inferno Titan. Deals two to Inferno Titan, one to AJ, so we can swing with Avenge Vine. Yep. Which is nice. Deals with a little bit of extra Ooh, damage. Ooh, swing with as many Avenge Vines as he would like. Oh. Well. Yes. And in comes a bunch of Avenge Vines. He's forced to block with Inferno Titan, and now he's playing for Day of Judgment. Is it there for AJ? Can't see. Oh, nope, it was a bolt. That bolt needed to come much earlier to deal with that Fauna yeah, Shaman. Absolutely. And now, uh, <laughs> that is what Ryan's deck is supposed to do, unlike the last game where uh, things didn't quite go as planned. Birds of Paradise early really sets up, sets up a nice start for Ryan. Like he can play it out and then quickly generate a mana and get an advantage over a, any counter magic AJ has, over any removal AJ has, and Fauna Shaman obviously sticking in this game. Uh, as opposed to getting bolted, really allowed Ryan to get the advantage he needed. We'll yeah. see if it goes for the third game. AJ's back on the play, which seems to be pretty crucial in this matchup. Sure, and yeah, absolutely does. I mean, letting letting Ryan get away with all the stuff he's trying to do is pretty rough for AJ. Yeah. I mean, so we see the players going back to their sideboards. What do you think, what do you, what do you think they're going to be changing now that they're on the draw? Or now that uh, Ryan's on the draw and AJ's on the play? Well, like I said, I'm not the best at this sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> well, let's get your take on it. Let's see. I don't know. I mean, you think uh, Ryan brings in Gideon? You think Gideon's any good here? I like a lot of players like Gideon against the Cobble decks because what happens is the Cobble deck casts Gideon, and then you cast Gideon, and you know they like, they like expect to get plus two or whatever, so they can lean on it. And then you cast Gideon, they trade, and you can attack them for a bunch of damage. Right. So, I mean, that, that seems like it could be a decent plan for Ryan. Uh, because AJ would get to Gideon first. And AJ probably wants to stick a Gideon here. I don't know what sort of changes, I don't know what sort of changes they would make, uh, necessarily. Yeah, I mean, I, there's, I mean, like, for example, we saw Ryan boarded in a Cidic Slime. Right. Um, now, he wants some to deal with, with all the swords in AJ's deck, but there's a question of, like, how many slimes do you want? Do you want both the slimes in addition to your Scrap Melter? Like, you know, like, because uh, if you draw it naturally, it's a little weak on the draw. It's not very fast. It's too bad Sun Titan can't get back the Scrap Melter. Oh, yeah. That'd, that'd be sick. Real. Sun Titan can't get back Manic Vandal. It's true. Just saying. Very true. Uh, they just, the players decided to intentionally draw. Huh. It looks like they're still going to play it out for fun. 
flip over, the, flip over their seven cards and play it out for fun. But they're, they're two friends, and they're like, "Why are we doing this to ourselves? Looks like a close matchup." Let's uh, let's attention draw. How much time is left in the round? Was there a reason they did it besides just being? Uh, it could be cushy. <laughs> yeah, it's four minutes left. They didn't have 